Hello, I'm presenting my paper on the role of cardiac MRI in evaluation of primary dialytic cardiomyopathy under the guidance of Professor Dr. Pishar Sir. So dialytic cardiomyopathy is a disease of the heart muscle characterized by enlargement of uh, enlargement and dilatation of one or both of the ventricles along with impaired contractility. Primary or idiopathic dialytic cardiomyopathy is when a known cause cannot be identified. It can be due to a number of factors such as genetic and environmental factors, which together cause myocardial injury. Secondary dialectic cardiomyopathy is due to secondary causes like alcohol abuse and ischemic heart disease, hypertension, drugs, infectious myocarditis, etc. Ischemic heart disease and alcohol abuse are the most common factors. 2D echo is generally the initial imaging modality, but cardiac MRI at present is the imaging in, uh, tool of choice. It has high sensitivity and specificity. It offers high spatial and temporal resolution, provides improved soft tissue contrast, and has excellent myocardial tissue characterization abilities. And in addition, is non-invasive and non-ionizing. So the aim of our study is to assess the role of three tester MRI in the assessment of primary dilated cardiomyopathy. The objectives were to unequivocally diagnose primary dialytic cardiomyopathy in suspected cases and differentiate it from other cardiomyopathies to assess the disease severity and to assess cardiac function for assessment of fol for follow-up and for assessment of other important findings. So this was a descriptive observational study conducted using 20 patients referred from the Department of Card Cardiology who were either suspected of having primary dialytic cardiomyopathy or had a, a definite diagnosis of primary dialytic cardiomyopathy, and they had no previous history of myocardial infarction. The presence of secondary risk factors like alcohol abuse, ischemic heart disease, infectious myocarditis, and hypertension uh, was a tri excluding criteria for the study. So a three-plane SSFP localizer was obtained first, and for pre-contrast scanning, for cardiac morphology, we use T2 and T1 dark blood sequences. And for cardiac function, we use thinner sequences. Post-contrast imaging was done using gadolinium. And for assessment of delayed enhancement, a short axis TI scout image was obtained 10 minutes after the administration of gadolinium. And based on the optimal TI value to null the myocardium, a delayed 2 p high resolution PSIR sequence was obtained. Retrospective ECG gating was done during the scan to avoid respiratory artifacts. The data analyzed was uh, on the basis of the following parameters. And the results were total 20 patients were evaluated, out of which 13 were males and 7 were females. The mean cases, uh, the mean age of cases was 41.5 years, which ranged from 25 to 60 years. 19 patients had cardiac symptoms, and one patient had no cardiac symptoms. Six patients had mild cardiomegaly, 70% patients, that is 14 patients had moderate cardiomegaly, no patient showed severe cardiomegaly. 17 patients had dilatation of only the left ventricle, whereas three patients had dilatation of both left and right ventricles. 17 patients had systolic dysfunction with reduced ejection fraction less than 50%. Out of them, 15 patients had severely reduced ejection fraction less than 30%, and only three patients had normal systolic function with preserved ejection fraction more than 50%. Most of the patients had increased end diastolic volumes more than 140 ml, which is consistent with a dilated cardiomyopathy phenotype. Only three patients had normal end diastolic volumes less than 140 ml, as you see here. So 19, that is 95% of patients had wall motion abnormalities in the form of global left ventricular hypokinesia. Only one patient had no wall motion abnormality. Uh, considering patterns of delayed enhancement, 13 patients had no delayed enhancement, which is the most common pattern seen in dilated cardiomyopathy. Three patients showed patchy mid-myocardial enhancement. Two patients showed patchy sub-epicardial enhancement, and these two are again characteristic patterns seen in dilated cardiomyopathy. One patient showed both patchy mid-myocardial and patchy sub-epicardial enhancement. Only one elderly female showed an unusual territorial sub-endocardial late gadolinium enhancement pattern. 
17 patients had valvular dysfunction, out of which 12 had only mitral regurgitation, 5 had both tricuspid and mitral regurgitation, and 3 patients had no valvular dysfunction. 10 patients had pericardial effusion, 10 did not. So our first case is of a 55-year-old female with no secondary risk factors, and two chambers, CINE image and T2 dark blood image shows markedly dilated left ventricle, and the left ventricular end diastolic volume was 256 ml. And this patient had severe systolic dysfunction with an ejection fraction of only 19%. You can see associated mild pericardial effusion here. So a diagnosis of primary dilated cardiomyopathy was suggested. In the same patient, delayed gadolinium contrast enhancement image, short axis and four chamber images show patchy mid-myocardial enhancement in the interventricular septum. Next case of a 40-year-old female with primary dilated cardiomyopathy. He had no secondary risk factors. And this is a LVOT SSFP image and a four-chamber long-axis SSFP image showing markedly dilated left ventricle. And the patient had end diastolic volume of 339 ml. This patient, again, had severe systolic dysfunction with an injection fraction of only 26.5%. But in post-contrast imaging, no abnormal delayed enhancement was seen. A 45-year-old female, again, diagnosed with primary dilated cardiomyopathy, and she had no secondary risk factors. And you can see on these post-contrast images, patchy mid-myocardial enhancement in the interventricular septum. Again, a case of a 46-year-old male with primary dilated cardiomyopathy, showing patchy mid-myocardial late um, enhancement, and this is patchy sub-epicardial enhancement in the interventricular septum. So dilated cardiomyopathy is the most common cardiomyopathy and shows enlargement and dilatation of one or both of the ventricles along with impaired systolic function. So findings of MRI include enlargement of cardiac chambers, increased end diastolic and end systolic volumes, systolic dysfunction with depressed ejection fractions, wall motion abnormalities in the form of left ventricular hypokinesia, and valvular dysfunction can be seen because of chamber enlargement and annular stretching. Complications such as ventricular thrombosis can be seen because of hypokinesia. Now, characteristically, delayed contrast imaging in direct cardiomyopathy can either be uh, no abnormal enhancement pattern, which was seen in 13 of our cases, or patchy mid-myocardial or sub-epicardial contrast enhancement, which was seen in 6% of our cases. And this has to be a non-territorial enhancement pattern unrelated to a coronary artery distribution. Also, cardiac MRI has prognostic importance in dilated cardiomyopathy, and the presence of late gadolinium enhancement is associated with increased risk of adverse cardiovascular events. Thank you.